Okay, welcome to part one of this video series. Um, in this video, I'm just going to explain the directory structure, and then maybe we'll start on sort of coding the files and stuff. So this is the folder that you saw in the previous part, or oh, well, you saw the um, file from. So this is the videos page that we're we'll creating. I've got that open in my, in my browser at the moment, and as you can probably tell, it does absolutely nothing. The reason for that is that it's just literally a blank opening and closing tags, so nothing too uh, complicated there. Um, so the file structure is basically the same one that I always use and show you. Um, so we have this, the pages sort of in the root here, and then we have this core folder. In here we have this init file, which does like all the setup of the system. And then in this ink folder we have sort of any backend files. In this uh, video, we're going to be using just this single file, which I've just called YouTubeAPI.ink.php, um, and the reason for that is that it's sort of a nice way to separate the logic, sort of backend logic, from the output HTML of your page. So that's why we do this sort of backend files sort of idea. Um, so the, yeah, this file is just going to sort of define two functions, um, not too not really too long, so. Um, the other thing in the core folder you may have noticed is this cache folder. Um, in here at the moment there is absolutely nothing. Uh, and we're going to have PHP create two text files in this folder, um, which will store the output, um, the results of the um, YouTube um, API call. So that's pretty much it for the file structure. Um, I suppose we should start on the files. So I'm just come back to the directory root here, and in my editor, I've got open the three files that we're going to be working with. So videos are going to be the page, init is the first one we're going to work with, and the backend file is currently empty as well. Okay, so in the init file, the first thing we need to do is define a um, sort of path variable. Um, we do this sort of all the time, so I'm not going to particularly explain why, but um, this is how you do it. Uh, do name file. Oops, well, that's odd. Hmm. Okay, well, fair enough. Um, I'm not sure why it was open by another process. Um, so let, let's just uh, go to our videos page and include the init file. So it was in the core folder and it was called init.inc.php. HP. Okay, I guess that's going to keep happening. So let's just try. Right, let's just try echoing out the path variable. I just said that again. So let's do echo path, hit save, reload our page. You see, we get this full path here. So that obviously is working. I'm not sure why it keeps telling me that the file's open in another process. Um, seems a little odd, but okay, let's just go with it. Um, so yeah, this is the path we have from the path variable. It's just the full path to the core folder. So what we can do is then use this to just delete that. We can use this to include our backend files. So we c uh, it seems a bit pointless to define it as a variable here, but uh, we're going to be using it later in the functions as well. So yeah, uh, so we're including one file we'll do that using the include function. And the file we're going to be including is the path variable, and then we're going to need a slash because it didn't have the slash on the end. And then it was the ink folder, and the back and then the backend file which was called YouTube. API.ink.php. Right, good. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the backend file. Um, not the backend file, the init file even. So now if we go back to our videos page, just save that. Uh, annoying. Mm, okay, well, let's reload our page. You see, we don't get any errors, which means that the file has been included. Um, at the moment, it doesn't actually do anything, so it's a bit pointless. Um, so that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to go to our backend file and sort of define the two functions that we're going to be creating. So the first one, as you probably saw before, was get videos. So we'll just write the sort of definition for that. So function keyword, get videos, and then the um, parameter we're going to be passing into this function is the YouTube username. So let's just have the username variable here. I'm also just going to quickly comment what this does. So gets all of the videos for the given user. Okay, so that's that. Um, and the second function is the get playlist function, which we're going to define in a similar way. Get playlists, username, spelt right, 
And I'm also just going to comment what this does, which is gets all of the oops, all of the playlists, playlists for the given user. Okay, so that's the two functions sort of um, functions defined. So obviously we need to sort of code something in here. Um, and if you remember from my um, uh, signature tutorial, the sort of we got the data by using the YouTube API, and that returned an XML document, um, sort of a feed, it's sort of a feed you can subscribe to. I'm not sure why. So to get that, we, the first thing we need to do is actually get the data. So we're going to define a new data variable, we'll look at data like that. I'm going to set that equal to file get contents. So we we'll spell contents right. Contents. Um, weird. Okay, so the file that we're getting the contents of, it's not actually a file, it's a URL, so that's going to be http colon slash slash um, gdata dot youtube dot com slash uh, feeds slash api slash users slash, then it's the username you want, so we're going to use the username variable, and obviously I need to change these quotes to doubles because variables don't work in single quotes. Whoops. Right, so slash the username, slash uploads. So that's basically the same as we ended up with um, at the end of my um, signature tutorial, or during my signature, tut signature tutorial even. So this data will be a huge XML document. Um, you can also control the number of results that you get and the sort of um, place you start from, but I'll explain that in a moment. Um, because first we need to sort of pass this into an XML uh, object. Uh, we're going to do that using the simple XML load string function. So we can define a new variable now called XML, and that's going to be equal to, oops, just put that in a nice place like so. That's going to be equal to simple XML load string. And the thing we're going to be loading, the string basically, is the data variable. Oh, tell me that. So, uh, okay. So now, if we did, um, like, if we just did print underscore r of XML, this will sort of show the format of what we get returned. Uh, obviously, we need to call this function. So let's just go back to our videos page and call uh, the function. So get videos and my username. So, if we reload our page now, I spell XML wrong, so let's go back here and change that to an X, not an S. Reload our page now. You see we get this huge, ridiculous page. Um, so one thing we can do to make this sort of display nicely all the time is um, set the content type header to text. So say if like I view this page source, and just drag this over here, we get this sort of nicer, nicer formatted thing. This is what is actually output, but because the browser is trying to process this as a HTML document, um, it doesn't process new lines. New lines are ignored. Um, so we could like use the um, content type header to force the browser to process this page as a te plain text document. So we can do that just in the videos page at the top. We can just add header content content type text slash plain yeah. uh, so reload a page now and you see we get a nicer easier to read sort of format that's just something I usually do when dealing with sort of testing stuff or plain text okay so now you can see that the see the data that we have returned so this um, this big like page here. I mean, you can see how long it is. Look at my scroll bar on the right, not going down at all. Um, you can see like the data we get back from the API call. Um, there's quite a lot of, sort of seemingly nonsense stuff, like the title, which seems a bit pointless. Um, logo stuff like that. So obviously this is all like for a feed, um, like an RSS feed sort of, and uh, that you would subscribe to with some kind of RSS reader or feed reader, I should say really. Um, so like the title just controls the title of the feed and the logo is the logo that comes up. 
So all of this is a bit useless to us. All we want is the actual um, list of videos. So like I mentioned in my uh, signature series, um, you can ignore all of this and what we want is the entry array which is down here. Um, and this array contains information on all of the videos. So each element in this entry array uh, will be will represent a single video. So you can see by default there are quite a lot. Well this is one here and it goes all the way down to... where is it here? No, further. Yeah, okay it stops here. This is the second video. So like we don't we want to um, well we can change the number of videos that are returned so we can do that using those get parameters that I mentioned a moment ago so in our backend file sort of at the end of our file get contents line like so the, the URL that we're getting the contents of we can specify the start index which is well, we'll do it like this start index and that's the location sort of in the list that we start from. So it's similar to the MySQL limit uh, keyword if you want to compare it to that. Um, so for now we're just going to set this equal to 1 and we're also going to set the max results. Just to demonstrate I'll set this equal to 2 although uh, we're going to be setting it to 50 for the actual sort of function. So I'll reload this now. You can see we get a much shorter output um, and then in our entry um, array here we have one element Scroll, scroll, scroll. Second element. Scroll, scroll, and then that's it. So that's con that's limited the number of results to two. Uh, I'm just going to set this to 50 because I think that is the maximum you're allowed to request, uh, and it is a huge document, so it's probably not very sensible to request many more than that. And now you can see that we have like way more. Um, here's the fourth one. Okay, so what we want to do is process this. Uh, to return like a nicer array that does not contain such a ridiculous amount of information like all this stuff about links and tick there's also like keywords like all the keywords or tags that you entered when you uploaded the video all those show up in here um, like here these are the keywords actually and uh, they're in the where are they they're in the category array for some reason um, and they seem to start from the um, sort of like the first to represent the actual category that you selected, like I selected the category education because it's a tutorial. Well, this is a tutorial, uh, uh, and then from the second one to the end, they seem to be the tags that you entered. So I always enter these as the first two tags and tutorials, blah blah blah. Um, so if you want to get the tags, you can do that. Uh, all we're going to be getting is the sort of title of the video, the um, description of the video, and the um, um, link to the video. Um, we'll be returning that. So what we can do is go back to our page and sort of start <laughs> working on that I suppose. So what we want to do is oh, that's really annoying me now. What we want to do is um, loop over each of the videos in the um, sort of entry array of the XML response and then process that into a nicer array. So before we can do that, we need to define that array that we're going to be um, putting them in. <laughs> I'm just going to define that as videos equals array, like so. Okay, so um, what we want to do after we've defined the array is loop over the entries. So for each XML oops, entry, now this um, is of object-orientated syntax. Um, you can think of it in a similar way as to getting the property, uh, sorry, the element out of an array. Um, so basically, it, this isn't an array, it's a simple XML element object, as it says here. Like sometimes it says array, like it does here. Um, but this is a um, object. So instead of each one of these being an element, each one of these is a property. And you access these properties using that arrow that I just showed you. So to get this, it'd be the little arrow and then ID. Um, you don't use quotes, it's just like that. Okay, so that's sort of how you do that. Um, I'll be doing some more videos on sort of object oriented programming maybe in the future, so watch out for those. Okay, so we're doing for each um, as video, because each, each entry represents a video. Um, and then in the next part, we are going to code the sort of inside of this for each loop. Okay, so thanks for watching, and join me in part two for the rest of this and the other function.
Okay, good.